Okay, so this is what we've come to the Trinity Church site to see. So these are outcrops of Devonian Mahantango formation. And this is a siltstone, mainly, um, a mud rock. It is uh, usually pretty massive here in the Fort Valley. In other words, it doesn't have fine layering to it. Um, there are some places where you can see layering, but for the most part, it's, it's big, chunky masses of silt. In this silt are fossils, and these fossils come in a couple of varieties. There are trace fossils, and then there are also body fossils. Let's take a look and uh, explore some of the different kinds of body fossils you can find here. A great place to start looking for fossils is just in the debris that has dropped down from the base of the outcrops. And then you can find some good stuff in there, like this example right here. That shows some crinoid fossils. So crinoid fossils, when you find them in the Mahantango, they look like little lifesavers or um, rings, Cheerios maybe. Uh, sometimes they have delicate little etching on the surface of that ring. These are some of the segments of the crinoid columnal, the sort of stem of the animal. And uh, when the animal dies, its connective tissue rots, and these individual segments fall apart. Uh, they kind of remind me of vertebrae in a backbone, um, how the spine could come apart into all these little pieces. But you can stick those pieces back together, and you get a sense of this linear form overall. Here's an example of what these crinoids look like when you view them lengthwise. So here's two segments side by side, and you can see that they're sort of these linear features that have these little grooves going across, and they're, these look like half a cylinder. So this is like a roll of lifesavers. So you're seeing some of that material that was preserved, connected to its neighbors, and a bunch of these little columnal segments all lined up together. Uh, so that's an example of what these things look like in a more complete state, although still not as complete as the whole animal skeleton. Here's some more of these crinoid columnals in outcrop, and uh, I'll try and demonstrate here that they are still calcite. So you can see them fizzing if you put a little acid on them. But you'll note that the, the matrix doesn't fizz. All right, So where there's residual calcite in the form of the, the skeletal material, you get a reaction. But um, not where you just have silt. And so over time, weathering of these rocks will result in little hollows that are left behind, impressions, external impressions of the form of the body fossil. But um, here you've actually got some of that original material still around. Here are some examples of another kind of organism that we find preserved as body fossils in the Mahantango Formation. Here you've got some examples of brachiopods. Brachiopods are creatures that were filter feeders, and they had two shells. So a lot of introductory students will often mistake them for bivalves, like clams or scallops, but they are not bivalves. They had a, a long, fleshy stalk that um, anchored them to the substrate, and then they opened up their shells, and they extended this curled feather of an organ called a lophophore to filter out the uh, food particles from the water. So that's another member of the fossil fauna here. This is the outcrop uh, just across the street from Trinity Church. And it's more of the same, um, but there's sort of a taller exposure here. And I've found that this site is pretty good for finding trace fossils called zoophycus, uh, which are feeding traces where some organism went through the mud and um, basically processed it for food particles. Let's see if we can find one. Yep, there's one. So these zoophycus, they, um, they're subtle little topographic relief features. Here's a place where we can see bedding. It's one of the few examples in this set of outcrops where I can confidently say I know what the orientation of the surface of the earth was when these strata were laid down. So as I mentioned, the Mahantango Formation is a mud rock. It's a siltstone, and um, it's massive. So it lacks internal bedding, except right here. You can see there's a line of brachiopod shells 
that goes something like this, and that line is the surface outcrop of a plane, a bedding plane, of brachiopod shells that goes through like this. So that is um, a storm deposit. The brachiopod shells are large sedimentary particles, much larger than the little grains of silt that make up the rest of this rock. And for them to be transported down into an area where silt was being deposited indicates that there was some high energy event, probably a storm. You know, what you're looking at here is probably an ancient hurricane that brought these giant shells down into otherwise deep water where they were dumped along with uh, the silt. Okay, so here's a little quiz. What kind of fossil do we have in the field of view right now? Well, hopefully you keyed into the fact that right here we've got some of these curving little stripes that overlap one another, and that is zoophycus, the feeding trace fossil. So where does all this mud come from? If the Mahantango Formation is several hundreds of feet thick of mud covering this entire valley and ridge region, where did all that mud come from? Where did all that silt come from? These are sedimentary particles, and so they're produced from the weathering and erosion of other rocks. So this shift from the carbonates of the Helderberg group into the siliciclastics again of the Mahantango suggests that Appalachian mountain building has begun anew. A new cycle of mountain building has commenced, and that is the Devonian-aged Acadian orogeny, the consequence of a microcontinent docking with North America as those two converged. They shoved mountains into the air, those mountains eroded, sediment was generated, and it came downhill and was deposited in a marine basin here. So the Mahantango Formation is kind of like the equivalent of the Martinsburg Formation that we saw earlier in the trip. It's flish, marine sediments that are siliciclastic, having been produced as a result of mountain building. To recap the trip so far, we have an initial carbonate package that represents passive margin conditions. Then that's overlain by siliciclastic sediment produced by the Taconian orogeny. That's overlain by carbonates like the Helderberg group that represent a return to passive margin conditions. And that's overlain by this stuff, a return to siliciclastic production, in other words, a return to mountain building. 